Hello. Today we're going to talk about the SPANs, or the Short Parallel Assessments of Neuropsychological Status, with the test's author, consultant clinical psychologist Dr. Gerald Burgess. So, Jerry, could you tell us about the purpose of the test? Well, the purpose of the test is to assess people's cognitive skills, people who have had some cognitive compromise of one sort or another. And this might be an acquired brain injury, or it might be a progressive um, condition like dementia. And it's a, it's a test that has, contains uh, 30 different tasks or subtests that combine into seven index scores. So in these index scores, you're me measuring someone's orientation to person, place, time, and condition, and some aspects of the political environment, for example. You're measuring their attention and concentration around different kinds of tasks, and their language, both their receptive language and their expressive language, their memory and learning capability, uh, something called visuomotor performance, in which there's a number of tasks that integrate vision, spatial, perceptual, and motor tasks and efficiency, how quickly or efficiently someone is working on something, and conceptual flexibility, which is a little bit like uh, the executive functioning types of aspects on the conceptual front. And inherent in the test design is uh, the capability of testing and retesting at two different time points. So it's very useful when you're tracking someone's progress or uh, predicting their tra trajectory of recovery uh, or uh, decline due to a progressive condition that you get two time points of assessment. And one problem with single version tests is that the patients were uh, exposed to that which they may have some residual memory for, like a word list or a novel problem to be solved. And having these two versions essentially solves that problem of uh, same difficulty, same instructions, everything else is exactly the same, but different content. What led you to design the test? Well, I was working on um, an acquired brain injuries unit and a rehabilitation, neurorehabilitation unit. And I was paying attention to the referrals that I was receiving, you know, be that they were assess mental capacity of a patient, uh, rehabilitation planning, looking at strengths and weaknesses, uh, discharge or placement decisions. And there are certain kinds of tasks that end up being very helpful to making decisions about patients, um, such as uh, their ability to comprehend um, instructions or how many stages of instructions can they um, take in and carry out. Um, if they're exposed to the same sort of material over a period of trials, do they learn? Do they retain that information over a period of time? Um, how is their vision? What are they seeing? Do, are they seeing the world like the rest of us? There, there's a number of questions that are very helpful to understand the patient and to help uh, with uh, rehabilitation planning. And then again, just to say this aspect again of, of checking people at, at two time points. Um, in which uh, you're tracking how they're, how they're doing. These were all things that I found that I, that I needed that I couldn't necessarily find somewhere else. Uh, so I thought it would be useful for myself and for others to have one standardized test co-normed with all the kinds of tasks that might be useful for this sort of purpose. Who would use the test and with what patients? I'm a, I'm a clinical psychologist, and certainly any clinical psychologist could use this test. And I would say that probably those people who I worked with on my multiple, multidisciplinary team would also be appropriate, and they would be occupational therapists, uh, speech and language therapists, brain injury case managers, um, psychiatry and neurology teams, and the patients, it's currently normed on people with acquired brain injury of different sorts. Uh, traumatic brain injury, um, abscess, aneurysm, stroke. Um, it would be appropriate for people uh, in the early stages of dementia, 
Um, it would be any patient really between the ages of 18 and 74 of which someone would find um, what the SPANS offers useful in their assessment. How long does it take to administer? Well, it depends. It depends both on clinician's need and patient capability. Um, taking patients first, uh, they vary in their capability and so thus their speed that they might answer questions. Some of the questions are timed, so it has a time limit. Others, uh, uh, the patients are more free to respond and they may be, may be slower. When we were doing norming, um, standardization assessments using the spans, uh, people were completing it in less than 30 minutes. In my clinical work, I noticed it tended to take between 30 and 45 minutes to administer the whole, the whole test. But you do have, uh, um, uh, clinicians do have the option to um, uh, put together a, a, uh, a set of questions uh, or use index scores or only use subtest scores based on their need. So, um, all, all scores down to the subtest level, you can interpret from our norming that we have undertaken. So there can be a short test in which, in which, as I said, two index scores and a few subtests, or you can administer the whole thing. Perhaps it would take around 45 minutes. But it's, it, is, it is designed to be flexible in that way in which, in which you can pull out what you need for a purpose that you need based on a particular patient. What makes it distinctive? Well. I would say that probably the thing that makes it distinctive is that I had the opportunity to trial many tests over several years and acquire from that experience what's really good about particular tests. And I had the aim of, of taking all of those aspects that were really good about other tests and trying to put them all on, onto one test under one umbrella. So I think that's probably what makes it distinctive. And for, for a short battery test, of which this is, it has seven index scores. Uh, that's, that doesn't really occur anywhere else for a short battery test. They're highly reliable and valid tests, uh, subtests and index scores, um, that in the process of designing them, it's always helpful to have several different kinds of tasks that all tap into the same cognitive skill. You put those all together in one index score and you're getting a reliable score. You, you, you get a better sense of what it is that you're measuring. So the SPANS is very strong in that sense. It has the parallel version, uh, which is also another rare thing for the test and retest and tracking people's progress through time. And that it's user friendly that I was able to borrow from tests um, uh, the aspect of making interpretation easy, providing case studies, providing analysis of data that we have and sharing it with, with the consumer, with the, with the SPANS administrator. And that it's that uh, through clinical experience and these analyses, there's a number of uh, possible interpretations that you could take right from the test manual, put it into your report, see what feels right, what seems right about this particular patient, what doesn't. And uh, so it's all, it's all very user-friendly, I would say, as well. Can you show us what the kit contains? The kit has this uh, manual, which of course um, contains many of the things we've been talking about today. A little introduction to the test, um, background on its development, literature review that went into its development and clinical experience. Um, scoring and administration procedures, special scoring uh, circumstances um, for, for some of the particular tests, um, interpretation. Uh, there's a chapter on reliability and validity of which we, we went through several um, stages of analysis, looking at uh, internal consistency, test retest reliability, ability to distinguish between those with a brain injury and those without and those with right hemisphere injuries from left, and uh, also inter, inter rater reliability on some of the tests, some of the more complicated ones like scoring figures. And 
The uh, we also have uh, in the in the test manual special scoring circumstances for those, for example, who only have yes no responding for patients who only have that. Uh, when assessing mental capacity, when people don't have language or vision, there's accommodations all set up in, in the test manual to accommodate for that. The case studies, as I mentioned, and areas for future research, plus scoring guidelines, all in the test manual. And some of the tests are timed, so I have, uh, we have a, a, a stopwatch that doesn't beep, so it doesn't distract or stress the patient and uh, it comes with a clipboard with um, scoring templates. There's two stimulus books, one for version A and one for version B. Uh, they come on an easel. I have one open here to um, you know, the cover page and another open to one of the, one of the screens that is part, makes up part of the test. It's useful because it, it stands up for uh, working at a table or at an outpatient clinic. Examiner is behind, able to flip the pages, as you see. Or it's very useful if you're doing bedside assessments to be able to hold it like this, um, with the patient seeing it and turning the pages subsequently like that. This is uh, an example of what the scoring booklet looks like. And at the end, there is uh, a throwout in which uh, you can be scoring the sheets and transferring the raw scores directly into tables here going to the test manual for your interpretive uh, T-scores and percentiles. There are t also two perforated um, response sheets that um, patients fill out. And they come, um, you can pull them right out of the uh, scoring booklet, put them on the clipboard, um, take them to the inpatient ward or to the outpatient clinic, and you're ready to go. These are response sheets in which, in which, uh, in which the patients fill out, and these are again connected to tasks around the, the test. So it all comes in one package, as you see, very convenient. Thank you, Jerry. The SPANS is being launched by the test publisher, Hographer, in June 2014. Further information can be found on their website, www.hographer.co.uk.